We definitely do have a better view of these cats. Isn't this wonderful here where we are? And a rare treat. The large male or pride male is with his cubs, which is uh, which is not unusual, but I mean it is it is they get quite irritated by the boisterousness of cubs and so quite often what you uh, what you get is a grumpy male with a bunch of cubs hanging off of him and eventually one of them gets a hiding and uh, and so they separate out and what we've got now is we've got a whole bunch of ages different ages here with dad and uh, although he may not he may not be the father of all of these cubs he definitely will be part of the coalition that is the father of these cubs. If it wasn't the fact, he'd be killing all of these cubs. The male lions that are that uh, are unrelated to the cubs do not tolerate them at all. Now, these cubs are moving off, and the reason for that is that a big female who's in these bushes here has has uh, has started to call the cubs, and they react to that sound. I think what we're going to do is just turn the car around and. Uh, See if we can follow these youngsters. They're going to come out onto the road, and I think they're probably going to disappear. Fairly quickly. So we've got lions everywhere. Of course, this particular pride, the Angama pride, has gone up to a massive amount of lions. busy standing over here and all going to have a game with one another and I think we're in prime position to actually see that. I'm just busy getting us into a, into a better spot. Madeline, you wanted to know if there's a limit to the amount of vehicles that are allowed in a Mara sighting. There is actually a limit. Uh, there shouldn't be more than five vehicles that are stationary in, in, a, in a sighting. It does, however, go a little bit more than that. And in theory, I don't actually have a problem with it, to be honest. I think that, you know, these sightings, especially in an open place like this, can handle lots of cars. Um, it just depends on how, how the cars are positioned, are cubs being separated from mothers, um, you know, there's a lot of questions that you've got to ask. It's, it, there's no hard and fast rule. Every sighting is different. Uh, every condition is different. And it, 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 is, it is basically, it comes, down to, uh, it comes down to the cars in the sighting, in my opinion. Here come the youngest cubs now. These are the ones that we saw just initially um, playing in that deep drainage line. I think they were left behind. A lot of cubs here. Those are the youngest ones that we're watching coming across there now. Around about Earth lifetime, we saw them. They were just a couple of days old at that particular stage. And uh, that was on the 10th of July. It was uh, around about then that these cubs were born. Gary. You've asked how long it would take them to reach adulthood. Um, at about a year and a half, about at nine months old, lions are starting. Like lions from all ages look scruffy. Nine to about nine months to about fifteen months old, sixteen months old, lions all of a sudden come into their own. Females will take an active part in the hunting. Male lions would are big enough and heavy enough to uh, to squabble and scrap over meals. Um, and, uh, and from about two years old, I would say that as you, they, they, they're still sub-adult to two years old. Two and a half to three years old, they're adults. Um, but from about two and a half years old, I would say that females are a very productive, uh, beneficial part of the pride. Um, whereas males are starting to become big and their manes are starting to come out. And then from about two and a half, three years old, um, We've got some lions having a game over there, but I don't think we can see them. They're going to come this way, though. Um, from about two and a half, three years old, male, the mothers of males will come into estrus again, and these males will start to react to their mom's estrus. That will then, in turn, elicit an aggressive response from the pride male who will kick them out, um, along with their moms. And they become then nomadic until they're old enough to take over pride, which happens at around about five to seven years old. 
Look here, uh, in front of us there, we've got li one lion stalking a brother over there. So that's typical play behavior. And you'll see now they're going to ambush one of their litter mates. <laughs> you notice how they use cover even from a young age already. And they're going to come bounding out of there now. You'll see something's going to spark and a, a, a charge. big game at the moment. These bushes provide a fantastic playground for these lions and uh, and also a never-ending series of hiding places should the need arise. I don't know what would come and tackle these lions given the fact that there's a big pride male here and all the mothers. That's a lovely picture. I didn't do it. Do you want to know if there's a plant here that these cats react to, like catnip in a domestic uh, cat? Um, that's actually quite a good question. Um, not that I've seen, to be quite honest with you. However, I've, I, for some reason, I have a memory in my mind of, uh, of, of lions reacting to a specific plant. I can't for the life of me remember what it is now, catnip, to be honest with you, but I want to say no because I've never seen it before with my own eyes. But in the same breath, I have a memory surfacing in my very wholly admittedly memory that, uh, that lions do react to a specific plant. Um, why don't I throw that up into the air for everyone watching today? And would you mind helping me jog my memory and see if there is a plant that lions react to similar to catnip? 